I'm sure most of you guys out there know how to make your own O-rings, but just in case there's somebody who doesn't, I'll show you how to do this. You simply cut it with a razor blade to the right length, whatever length you need it. Put a dab of super glue on the end, like so. Push the ends of it together, like so. Hold it there for a second. The glue between the surfaces, of course, dries faster than the glue on the outside, which will give you time to wipe off the wet glue There you go. That's how you make an oval ring. Easy to do. And now it is ready for the groove. Okay, now I've printed it off. This is the new one, and this is the old one. And I've decided that I would like to have an O ring in here. The reason is because I don't want it scratching up my piston like this one did. This one just had this rough surface in here and debris got in here and it scratched up the piston surface. I don't want that so I'm going to put an o-ring in here to help keep the debris out. So I'm going to have to redo this. Now I could, I could put this on the lathe or a mill and cut a groove in there but it's, it's easier to just print it, reprint it. So. I'm gonna put a groove in here. So I'm gonna take this, this pattern that I already have made here, and I'm gonna add an O-ring groove to it. Now, I already made an O-ring the correct size to fit inside of a groove inside there. So, I need to measure the O-ring and see how thick it is. And it is 0.2 or 2 tenths of an inch. So we need an O-ring. So let's go up here and find ourselves an O-ring. Taurus. Let's move that thing up here so you can see it a little better to work on it. And let's change the color to black, since that's the color of our O-ring. Okay. And now we measured this O-ring and it's two tenths. So, Well, the first thing we need to do, I guess, is make it large enough on the diameter. So let's, the diameter, it's seven. Okay, now we can only be two tenths tall. So let's squish this down until we're down to two tenths. make it a little bigger so our numbers go slower. Nine, two, right there. All right, now, let's move it down in there and see what it looks like. On the top, it looks like the outside edge is about right. center now this one is, is centered from the floor at 0.32 and so we want to make sure this one is centered the same and it is centered at 32 here it is looking from the floor or the bottom you can see the area here the 
area here is the same. Now we don't want to print off this big O-ring here, big flat O-ring. So what we'll do is go to edit and subtract it. Okay, now instead of having an O-ring, we've got a groove in here. We've got a groove that's two tenths of an inch thick and it goes back into this wall far enough to hold that o-ring. Okay, I hope you're able to follow all that. And we're ready to print. So now this second one, this is the first one. This was the original one. Maybe I better go start back to the original one. This is the original one, come off of the jack. It's got the uh, bad spots. I got myself a sliver off of that right there. That's the first one. This is the second one I printed. It, it's a duplicate of the first one. But then I decided to put an O-ring in it. So then this is the one I printed now. Now if you don't know anything about 3D printers, they, they melt the plastic and then they try to place the plastic where you want it. Because it has trouble placing it in the air without it sagging, you have to have supports or else you get sags. Now if you have supports inside of a crevice like this, the supports are really hard to clean out of, or clean, clean out. So I didn't want any supports in there. Well, because I don't have any supports in there, I knew there was going to be some sagging. And you can see they're sagging here. In fact, it probably sagged the whole distance a certain amount. In fact, it sagged enough that the O-ring won't fit into the groove. It comes close in some places. It almost it starts to go in there but it doesn't fit correctly so and I knew I was gonna have to do this what you can what I'm gonna have to do is put it on the lathe and take a small tool and just well I, I could do it by hand but I'm too lazy so I'm gonna stick it in the lathe and uh, use a small tool and and run through there and clean it all out so that the o-ring will fit in there the way it's supposed to and then We'll put it on the piston and, and go. I'll make some more videos showing you the rest of it and we'll go from there.